Today's episode of The Grave Talks is brought to you by Best Fiends. Download Best Fiends free today on the App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R, Best Fiends. Today on The Grave Talks, darkness following. A conversation with Sister Kia Lynn Francis. It starts with a near-death experience. It's a moment of trauma and stress for everyone involved. When the person pulls through and survives, it's a time to celebrate and cherish a life that will continue. Sister Kia Lynn Francis' life started that way. As she grew, she would grow to meet an imaginary friend that wasn't so imaginary, have the ability to sense and feel forces from the other side, and eventually would fall victim to a demonic infestation in her own home. Today, she uses these gifts to help those around her as a member of the Holy Order of St. Michael, the Archangel, Catholic Mystic, and Nesper, Order of Exorcist, Reiki Master. This is her story on The Grave Talks. Uh, as a child, I had an imaginary friend. Looking back, I think I was hanging out with a little ghost girl, um, to be quite honest. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've had several near-death experiences, and they seem to draw me closer to the veil. Every time I have one, I seem to get a new gift or a gift is grown upon, you know. Mm -hmm. I say gift. They're kind of curses sometimes. Sure. Um, you know, and I had SIDS as a baby and had to be resuscitated. I was basically dead. And I think that was my first experience with poking the veil at that time. Mm -hmm. And so I think that started my gifts early. Um, and so that I was hanging out with Dinja and she looked like she came from, you know, probably about 1855, like Little House on the Prairie vintage. Sure. And she always hid when anyone came around. And, um, you know, we had great talks, but she didn't have a face. She had a veil, like her hood... Um, bonnet was always up and it was always cinched down and uh, I never saw her face ever and uh, which is weird right for an imaginary quote unquote imaginary friend that's an interesting um, one yeah mm -hmm. so we hung out together um, like for years growing up and in my grandparents farmhouse which was very old and people had you know like as they did in the day been born and died in the same place um, and there'd been deaths on the property and so forth. I always felt like I was being watched as a child and I would never go upstairs by myself, even in the daytime. It gave me the heebs and mm -hmm. <laughs> I always felt like there was somebody up there with me even as a child. And I mean, I wasn't afraid of the dark. I wasn't a child like that, that, you know, had a crazy imagination or anything. I always just felt like there was something there mm -hmm. watching me. And uh, I always remember that. So I would always drag my sister upstairs with me if I had to go. It didn't matter if it was two o'clock in the afternoon. There was no way in heck I was going up there by myself <laughs> because I knew I wasn't by myself. Sure. And uh, her bedroom, someone had... Uh, uh, someone had died in her bedroom and uh, I, I would never, I found this out later, um, I would never sleep in her bedroom. We had separate bedrooms and I would never sleep in hers. I hated it. I hated the energy in it. Even even back then I was sensitive to energies. So uh, it started quite early and then it progressed. And in my 20s, um, I started to really have more experiences, um, you know, with like... Uh, uh, yes, I use spirit boards and, uh, you know, automatic writing. I sat down with a piece of paper and a pen in front of me and it started moving on its own. And I was like, um, what in the actual hell? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I didn't do it on purpose. I didn't initiate it. I didn't know what automatic writing was or, you know, free writing. I had no idea. It just started happening. 
and uh, it totally freaked me out. A- and a- explain uh, to the audience a little bit more about what automatic writing is. And yeah, what it's uh, it's it's a uh, it's a divination tool. It's a way to contact spirit. Um, that you hold a pen or a marker or whatever and a paper pad, uh, and uh, they essentially use your hand or the pen um, as an implement to communicate and they will write through your hand they kind of borrow your hand and they'll write messages or images they'll draw pictures Uh, I've had uh, things come through in other languages um, like in in uh, indigenous languages like so I'm talking languages there's no way that I you know knew the word for grandmother in in uh in in in, in uh, a first nations language mm-hmm. you know it's not possible and uh i happen to have been working uh with jeff richards um as a like a mentor when i got a bit older and i realized okay i have to get these gifts under control and he labels himself an intuitive and uh he's the um star of the show the other side and i was working with him and he does that uh, as his part of his process when he does his uh, walks. So um, later in life, I, I learned more about it. But in my 20s, it was just happening. I mean, it, and it, it, it was drawing pictures. Yeah. And it was and it's not your own handwriting when it happens. There's different pressures involved. Different entities have different ways of writing. Uh, you know, you can feel it. Uh, later in my life, I lived in a house that was, uh, it was a demonic infestation. And uh, the 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 creepy stuff that came through, you know, it was terrifying. Like I still have the books, and uh, the one main, you know, uh, entity was very. Uh, the pressure was very was very hard. It was very fast. It was uh, very vulgar. Uh, it said things that I would never say. Um, you know, and I, when I did it, I would have my eyes shut and I would be kind of in a meditative state. Um, not everybody does it like that. Everybody has their own way of kind of doing it. Um, but initially I would just sit down and put pen to paper and it would start moving in my twenties. So that freaked, you know, you can imagine yeah. that would freak you out, right? I, I'm just trying All to understand. sudden there's, there's something writing yeah. with your hand. I, I'm trying to understand your handwriting. <laughs> trying to understand the, just the process. I mean, is this something where, you know, is it literally just, you know, sit down at the table with a piece of paper and a pen and then see what happens? Is it more of a you said you're doing kind of in a meditative state. Is it something like that where you just kind of, you know, be at ease and then it just after a certain amount of time, it picks up. Are there times you, you sit there waiting for it and nothing happens or I mean, how um, how does that? Yeah, work? I mean. It's. I mean, again, it's a process. It's different for everybody, mm-hmm. right? Everybody's got their own way of doing it. Um, like I know Jeff uh, walks around when he does it, and he just gets impressions, and he starts writing, and he's like, do 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 do, and he's walking through the, you know, a house or whatever, mm-hmm. and he's getting his impressions, writing them down. Um, I, when I started it, he told me, you know, watch TV so that your subconscious brain is distracted you Mm -hmm. know distract the subconscious initially when you're when you're doing it okay and then see what happens and uh, or ask a question write a question down on the piece of paper and see if see if an entity will come and actually answer it you can do that too um you know i was always when i started doing it uh, more uh, it was like uh, i would write down the date the time the room and what i was doing like am i meditating am i am i watching mm-hmm. tv am i like listening to music with sound canceling headphones like what kind of situation am i in that that i'm doing it that i'm getting responses or not getting responses that kind of thing is there you know just kind of like a trial and error yeah. kind of situation w- with you know with you being the the conduit for something like that uh, is there is there risk involved with yes i mean cuz mm-hmm. cuz essentially i mean you're not possessed but it's like possession but you're light open. <laughs> you know? you're open yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean I, basically i mean you have to be careful with everything right like sure. i'm a, i'm a, like to label myself because i am a i'm a catholic sister i'm mm-hmm. not a nun so i've taken minor vows now uh initially i was a witch 
um, not a dark witch, you know, mm-hmm. um, uh, but I just, I believed in uh, a higher power, uh, you know, a divine creator and just had a really close bond with nature. And I just didn't find a place where I fit in with a church or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. and I still say that to people. I don't care where your ass is on Sunday, uh, as long as you have a really strong moral compass and you're a good person, mm-hmm. you know, you're good in my books, Sure. you know, and, and I'm not running around trying to convert people and stuff like that. And I say, if, you know, if you're meant to find God, you'll find God, he'll be waiting for you, mm-hmm. you know, and there it is, you know, I'm not, I'm not, uh, out to, uh, you know, on, on a mission to uh, preach and convert, you know, uh, uh, like I said, I, if you're going to find God, you, you'll find God. But I, 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 it's more important for me to have people with a strong moral compass that are working for good and raising vibration and positive energy in, in that sense. And I don't, uh, judge, uh, and neither does father Plato, mm-hmm. um, in, in that respect, you know, just be a good person, Sure. you know, <laughs> that kind of, that's kind of how I, I look at yeah. things, you know, that's my attitude. Um, so, but yeah, but when you're, um, so I'm, I'm because of being a sister, um, like I'm still allowed to date. Not that that happens. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I might as well be a nun, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, and I still can work and, you know, I haven't have, I don't have a vow of poverty or anything like that. Obviously not a vow of silence. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, you know, so I'm, I'm a regular folk just like, you know, uh, cause we're independent Catholic too. Uh, you know, just like father works and he's married and has children and stuff like that. So we're kind of like everybody else. Uh, and, sure. the, and then we put the clerics on, but we, you know, uh, can do exorcisms and there's, you know, other perks that mm-hmm. come along with the job. Anyway, sure. I'm rambling. No. <laughs> so I'm, I'm labeled a mystic, but if I was not a sister, I would be an empath and I would be a clairvoyant and I actually have all the clairs, right? For all the senses, okay. right? Sure. Oh my God. Sorry. My cats are going bananas. They just <laughs> knocked over a big crucifix and there's a salt lamp thereafter. Are and the cats trying to do an exorcism? It is October 1st, the day we're I recording this. I think the this. cats need an exorcism. <laughs> <laughs> I had a cat that I was suspicious of that at one time, quite literally. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, you know, uh, entities will jump into animals. Yeah. So when we do exorcisms, we actually put holy oil and holy water on any animal. Like I have put it on a, a gerbil before because wow. they'll go into any living entity. And I'm like, please, gerbil, don't take the end off my finger. I'm I'm trying to help yeah. you. <laughs> you know. <laughs> And it kind of seems ridiculous at the time that you're putting a, you're crossing a gerbil, you know, with holy oil. But well, th- this is an inter- <laughs> I, I, this is interesting, and and I I, I am I'm curious about it. just a weird theory that just kind of crossed my mind as we were talking. Back to the conversation in just a moment. First, I want to thank our supporter today. It's Best Fiends. If you've listened to the show for a while, you know I uh, love playing this game. I'm obsessed with it. Best Fiends. It's uh, one of the best match three style puzzle games out there. And it's a mental palate cleanser, as I like to call it. Sometimes you just kind of need a moment to escape and just enjoy something and be somewhat mindless, but exercise your mind at the same time. You know, just get away from the stress, get away from that sort of stuff. This is a great way to do it. Stop crushing the same old candy. Try this puzzle game. It's got something fresh to offer all the time. With Best Fiends, you play through an actual storyline, complete with good guys, the fiends, and the not-so-good guys, the slugs. Your friends start out as a wee baby version of their future selves. The more you play, the more fiends uh, you join uh, the join your team and uh, the more powerful that they become helping you solve increasingly challenging puzzles as you progress on through the game it's an action-packed adventure and a brain-boosting puzzle game all rolled into one the new content's added all the time so you never get bored that's what's so great about it you'll absolutely love it it's challenging and like i said new things are added all the time to it that's what makes it always fun and exciting to play download best fiends free today on the app store or google play that's friends without the r best fiends uh, because a lot of people I, i've heard lately and i had brought up on the show a while ago was people bringing pets into investigations and situations where they're sensitive and they may they kind of pick up on something before even the people do um yes. they, okay they, i'm not trying to be disrespectful and i'm not trying to be you know tongue-in-cheek but this is just a weird idea dog going into a situation 
prior to going in, consumes holy water. Mm -hmm. Would that have some sort of an effect? You know, the dog has the holy water in it at that point. It's going into a situation, if it was a dark type uh, situation where there was something demonic going on, not just, uh, you know, Aunt, uh, you know, Matilda. You should protect up. your animal. Yeah. You should protect an animal w going into an investigation. Would, would that if you're protect using it? a dog as a sensitive. Would that should, protect yeah. it if it if it consumed the water? Or is that, is that, yeah. uh, again, because I'm not trying to be disrespectful. Is that something no, you just no, shouldn't no, no, do? No, no, no. Like you shouldn't consume holy water. Is that a thing? I don't know. No, <laughs> we consume holy water. Okay, I'll okay. take a slug of it every now and again. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't know if that yeah. was like, oh my god, don't talk about you know drinking holy. Water. Like I don't know. No, oh, no. It's, okay. It's fine. It's uh, I mean, it's a it's a blessed water with exorcism yeah. salt mixed into it. That's basically. just yeah. So it's it's a salty water that's blessed. I just wonder so, if the animal would then almost... I mean, I, I wouldn't be drinking it out of the stuff that's at the church that sure. people have been dipping their fingers in, you know? But it, 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 it sounds You so, wouldn't catch me licking at yeah, that. exactly, yeah. I, I have it, bottles of it that are yeah, clean. Sure. So, you know, every now and again, yeah, I'll take a slug of it or, you know, yeah. you can put it on, an animal could consume it. Okay. And, uh, and like I said, like if, if there's... um. Uh, because we do come under attack, mm -hmm. um, you know, with what we do, we kind of have targets on our backs, yeah. um, uh, with being, um, you know, with father being uh, an exorcist and I'm an auxiliary exorcist. So we're kind of marked, right? Sure. Like, you know, like extra marked and, uh, negative stuff comes around every now and again. And I'm a crap magnet anyway, because of my gifts um, there's a portal in my house. Um, like I said, the last house I lived in was, a uh, demonically infested mm -hmm. and I, and I lived with that for years. Um, you know, and I was under attack. Um, and then that was before I was, uh, you know, a sister that was before I was involved in the paranormal. Mm -hmm. So people can't say, Oh, you brought it home from an investigation. I actually think what happened is, uh, one of the times that I almost died, I think it followed me back. Uh, something negative attached itself to me when I was almost dead mm -hmm. and, and, and came back with me and basically just fed off of me. The stronger I got, the stronger it got. And kind of and, like uh, took up residence in your home. And took up residence okay. and others came along and, yeah. you know, and then I lived in a home that uh, I've been writing a book forever and I'm such a lazy ass, I have to say. There's no reason I haven't written this book four times over, especially with being locked in the house with COVID. Um, but uh, I am writing a book about it. I mean, it, it's like a book that what the incidents that happened it's like uh it could be a horror movie you know if i let james wan go off with it you know <laughs> yeah um it, it and it, it was all true and uh but i'm pretty certain it came home from the hospital with me um when i was there one of my incidents like i've had i'm trying to think of how many times now how many near-death experiences and near-death experiences are different than post-mortem experiences when your heart stops and you flatline and you have no vital signs and your pupils are fixed and dilated mm -hmm. you know that's a post-mortem experience and then they bring you back and they zap you back and then you know you've actually been dead mm -hmm. that's different than a near-death experience like i've come close to dying but i've never actually been dead okay you know what i mean like sure. i've never actually been like you know no no response from pupils but i've had blood pressures of like 25 over 10 mm -hmm. kind of thing and that's not a viable blood pressure and i left my body that time yeah. Um, but I was still technically had vital signs, you know? So for my experiences, I've, I've always technically had vital signs and then I always develop a new gift and, you know, the clairvoyance came later in life. I, I had one issue when I was 15 of clairvoyance, I saw my boyfriend getting into a traffic accident over and over and then it happened. And, uh, I saw him getting hit by something dark and it was, he got uh, T-boned by a Navy blue uh, truck um, after I dreamt it about four times. Um, but I didn't see a truck. I just saw a, like a wall of darkness mm -hmm. coming at, at him. And I saw it from the perspective of his mother where she was sitting in the truck. 
but then that developed later in life and in my 30s and after more of these, you know, near near death experiences. Um, and then I, I just had another one recently, lucky me, where I had uh, a hip replacement and uh, I used to play roller derby and like full contact, mm-hmm. like pound the crap out of you. And I was like a wrecking ball. And so my right hip suffered greatly and I was a bodybuilder. So it also suffered greatly Sure. <laughs> and uh, needed a new hip. And I ended up having a blood clot from my knee to my hip and I fell. And um, four days later, I had a massive pulmonary embolism. So that's a big clot in my lung yeah. and I nearly died. I was in intensive care for a week and a half and part of my lung infarcted and died. Like if you had a heart attack in your heart, you, you know, myocardial infarction, mm-hmm. same thing. Um, I'm also a registered nurse too, like father. Um, so, uh, I nearly died from that. My heart rate was 200 for three hours, uh, uh-huh. until they got it under control. And, um, my respirations were about 85. I couldn't breathe. I would felt like I was suffocating. Um, and they thought that my heart suffered, uh, damage. The troponin, uh, which is an indicator of heart damage was like going sky high. Mm-hmm. That was like the worst cat scan trying to lay back for that increase the pain. And I'm pretty sure I left claw marks in the cat scan <laughs> over my head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure whoever was in t- went in next was like, what happened here? Yeah. <laughs> There's like eight finger marks in it. Like, <laughs> 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 so that was my last one that mm-hmm. was really intense. And, you know, it was, uh, but now I'm finding that, uh, I can do psychometry pretty well, which I didn't really have a flair for before. I would practice, but uh, I just did a couple of psychometries on the weekend for people and and they were spot on. So I'm like, oh, well, I guess that's that's something new. Psychometry. Uh, Explain that to the audience. Psychometry is when you touch an object Mm -hmm. uh, and you get impressions from it. So uh, a gentleman who is uh, doesn't believe nor not believe so he doesn't call himself a skeptic handed me something and he's like can you do psychometry and i'm like no mm-hmm. <laughs> like uh, well, i guess we're gonna see in a minute yeah <laughs> and he handed me an object and i said okay i said this was given to you by a male you know who's deceased uh he passed away from cancer i said you know it's a pool cue it's made of wood uh it's very special to him and it's very special to you i said you never use use it you never take it out of the box and I said it's like it was incredibly special between the two of you and he wanted you to have it and he gave it to you specifically you know before he passed away and like he was like go <laughs> you know and it was uh everything that I told him was correct so um you know he was impressed with that and then someone else gave me Uh, a pen and I said this didn't used to be a pen you know I said it's made of wood but the wood is old and it was specifically made for you someone carved it and you don't use this pen it's it's very special you only use it for like signing your name on stuff and it's a treasured object to you that was given to you by someone special and again all that information was correct too and uh they were like grinning ear to ear they were like oh yes that's all right that's all right you know and then they yeah. told me the back the back story so you know I, I gave them a fair bit of information about the objects that they gave me to touch so those were the impressions and um we were doing a, a, a with a Ottawa Paranormal uh, OPRI, Ottawa Paranormal Research and Investigation, Mm -hmm. is shooting uh, a show called Into the Haunting um, that I've been doing with them for a few years on and off. Um, It hasn't been picked up yet, uh, but we're we're just doing it, you know, and Mm -hmm. it's a lot of fun and uh, going to some neat locations. And I touched some stairs and I'm like, these are not the original stairs. Like, this is not where the lady died. Mm -hmm. And and he's like, no, that's correct. The stairs used to be over there, you know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So, so clearly that's something else I've picked up now um, since my last uh, 
poking at the veil. Yeah. So let, let I got to stop doing that though, really. <laughs> no you know? kidding. Next you're just going to do, it's just going to be like, there's everything's accessible. It's all there. Like you're just going to see the dead people walking around at 100% of the yeah, time. Yeah. You know, I really don't want that yeah. though. <laughs> like I'm, I, I, I'm really okay with not seeing dead yeah. people, like waking up and having like a decomposed yeah. person staring back yeah. at me. Like I, I have no desire for yeah. that. Well, you got to stay <laughs> you healthy <know>? then. <laughs> Like if God wills it, so be it. But yeah. like, I, I don't like, I can't imagine people that have that gift, like yeah. how like torturous it must be, honestly. Like yeah. that would be terrifying. Like, I mean, like the house that I lived in was terrifying enough mm-hmm. and I would never put a camera up at night because I did not want to see sure. what was going on when I was asleep. Yeah. Like, and, and, and I want to talk about that house here in just a second, but I want to ask, because so, we're talking about psychometry there for a moment. It, yeah. Does it work with essentially you know, any object that that has had meaning or does it need to be kind of, you know, given to you or asked of you in conjunction with another person? For example, could you walk through an antique store, pick up an object and then be able to kind of pick some stuff out of it, even without any family member, the owner of the object saying anything to you? Or does the person need to be there to be like, this is something special to me? What do you got? No, you know what? It, anything that's well, anything that's holding on to energy, right? Okay. Like I even to, in in a house, I if I go in and touch the floor, like if there's like maybe a blood spot, an old blood spot mm-hmm. in an old house that's from like you know 1850, and somebody had been murdered there or whatever, and I touch the floor, uh, or you know, or touch touch anything, any I mean things that hold on to energy, right? Mm-hmm. So. Uh, and that's basically everything. I mean, some things are more um, susceptible to holding on to energy. But if something really was special to someone, um, things that are made of wood, things that are, um, you know, um, things that are stone, like uh, limestone is a really good for holding on to stuff. But, yeah, I should be able to touch stuff and, and get an impression from from anything. Okay. Um, you know, I've seen things. I've gone to a haunted museum and seen objects and picked up stuff from them just from looking at them without actually touching them. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, so that's kind of like psychometry, but without sure. actually touching the stuff. But I used to practice my butt off with a deck of cards uh, and I would touch it and go like, OK, is it red or is it black? You know, and oh. try and go through the whole deck yeah. that way, you know, and that's how I would practice first thing in the morning, last thing at night and uh, and work on it that way kind of thing. Red feels different yeah. than black. Interesting. You know? I, I want to get into the house the that you lived in that when you came up from the hospital. But I, there's a question I wanted to ask before we get to that uh, from way back here in our conversation. Your childhood yeah. imaginary friend, um, mm. you know, you I'm assuming when you look back on the memories of this in in your mind are, are you you know are, are you seeing that person like you, you when you recall it uh, it was a child there just as clear as day just as any other child that you would have been playing with yeah yeah okay that's what i'm understanding yeah absolutely like yeah. she she was my best friend sure like, yeah <laughs> she was totally my best friend yeah. she she like looked like a holly hobby you yeah. know like i said she looked like um and oddly enough like little house on the prairie yeah. later in my life was like my favorite show and i was really drawn to that period yeah. and i really think that that's because that's what she looked like and i think a, i think a lot Minus of people have that sort of experience and and sometimes it hits them later in life where they actually realize Wait a second. What was it for you? What was the moment where you connected those dots and you kind of had that revelation of, oh, you mean everybody doesn't see their imaginary friends? Um, because I've, I think I've, I've always been different. Like my mom used to call me Weird Wilma. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mom. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but I, I, like, I think my mom always recognized that there was something different about me right mm-hmm. and not in a bad way sure. like I mean she's teased me in a loving way like okay weird Wilma but um yeah it was just I mean my sister had an imaginary friend mouse it was a, a imaginary mouse named Bruno but I knew it wasn't the same thing mm-hmm. I'm like no you don't yeah I'm like no you don't you don't you're, you're pretending did you know, you know did you know as a child that others did not see your imaginary friend yeah, because she used to book it when people would come in the room. Okay. She would go. She would leave, you know, and then she'd be like, I'll be back later. 
you know, it was it was just like I'm out of here, like no one else can see me. So you kind of throughout throughout most of you know once you got a little bit older, you knew that that was something. There was, maybe there wasn't necessarily that adult moment of like, wait a second, because <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think I ever okay. really doubted that okay. I yeah. saw something yeah. at that time. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't yeah. I don't think I ever really doubted that. Because it was yeah. so, it was too real to yeah. not have been real. Sure, you know. I, I had a moment on on our other program uh, years ago uh, with my ex wife uh, when we were talking, and and she had a, a situation. We we're talking about imaginary friends, and and I was I brought up, yeah, like I had one, but you know, you know, you don't see your imaginary friends, is the way I put it. And she's like, "What are you talking about? You don't see it. like you don't see them. Like you just when you're pretending, you're pretending." And she was talking about hers, like so I saw mine. And we talked about it in great detail. And it was literally kind of like a revelation moment of like, oh, my God, I think that was a ghost. And, yeah. And, and it, it was dressed in a, a period attire that was from a different time period. And it was it was a really interesting kind of moment on the show. And since then, I've had many calls and emails and stories, very similar type things where people have that kind of revelation sometimes you know they it's confirmed early on and you kind of get it and sometimes it, you're like 30 something and like oh my god <laughs> you know you just you're like wait a minute that yeah. was actually something you're like i was playing with a ghost holy crap yeah you know? <laughs> like, i know yeah for sure for sure yeah no i never doubted that she was real and especially like you know later on i thought yeah it was weird that i never saw her face mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I think that there was something to the fact that uh, she probably got kicked in the face by a horse and that's what killed her. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like there was something wrong with her face sure. and that's why I never saw it. She didn't want to scare me. Yeah. You know, she wanted to be friends, but not freak me out. And that's the that's the impression that I get now as an adult who has stronger senses. W- um, would, would that, she, that's why I never saw her face. Would she come in and play with you anywhere you were? Or was it only at your grandparents house? Nope, she'd come anywhere. Okay. She'd, she'd come anywhere. Yeah. Was yeah, there, she'd come in my house. She'd come to my grandparents' place. It was uh she was just like wherever I was and we wanted to play, she would she'd be there. She'd be playing like next to me, like we'd play Barbies. Like mm-hmm. you know? Was there a time yeah. where, where she eventually went away? Or did she ever have was there a moment where she's like, I gotta go now. Yeah. See you later. When I got when I got older, you know, then and like they say that once when we're old, when we're young, we're so open to uh-huh. stuff, right? And then when we get old, when we're young, we're open to stuff, so we'll see stuff because we don't know we're not supposed to, mm-hmm. right? And then when we get older, that kind of gets shut off, and we're not supposed to see ghosts, and ghosts mm-hmm. aren't real, and you're not really seeing a ghost, and yeah. you know that's that's all just silly talk, and you know, and I guess it just becomes a point where they just leave you know there, i mean if you're a meat i'm not a medium like sure. I, I don't profess to be a medium like i don't see well i mean i shouldn't say that sometimes i do see spirit like could they but a lot of times they come to me in dreams so there's my clairvoyance mm-hmm. or like i have premonitions and in my dreams and stuff like that and uh like this whole COVID business, like I had a chat with my friend about it, like before it really even started. And he's like, you gave me dates and you gave me this and you gave me, you know, waves. And he's like, and you were right, like right down to like, basically like the time frames and stuff. Yeah. And he's like, you know, that's, that's freaky. Like that's like, you know, premonition mm-hmm. Oracle kind of stuff. And, you know, I see some terrible things before they happen yeah. um, sometimes. So it's not always, ple- it's not always pleasant and it's not always like, you know, people think, Oh, it's so cool. And, you know, it's not always like it, it's sometimes very horrifying. And the stuff that you see is, is awful, mm-hmm. you know, and it's really upsetting and I'll wake up crying like and sweating and, sure. you know, and not, in a good place from what I say. I don't like enjoy watching news or television Mm -hmm. or, you know, I watch stupid stuff because it's not upsetting and I don't, um, I'm very empathic Mm -hmm. and like I started to watch a documentary about nine 11 and I, I completely fell apart and I'm like, Nope, that was a really bad choice. (laughs) Now I I get you. I get you. I find more and more. I mean, the the more I, I, I do this, the more I understand about myself and the more I learn about all these over the last 10 years of doing this show, it's, I, I, I finding myself to be more empathic than I think I thought I was. 
Um, yeah. and I'm, I'm discovering more and more, um, you know, I, I, I'm drawn to, you know, dark topics and things like that. You know, we, this is what we're talking about here. Uh, you know, then I have a true crime show and I could watch Dateline for hours on end, but I discover that when I do that, even though, you know, these are stories that are not affecting me, it's like that really pulls you down. Like it, it, it lowers your vibration. Oh my goodness. It really, it yeah. really lowers your vibration. Yeah. And, um, and you feel that. Yeah. And um, like I'm a Reiki, actually I'm higher than a Reiki master. I'm between a Reiki master and a Grand Master, just because of how my teacher teaches it. So mm-hmm. I'm I, I'm uh, a Reiki master plus higher levels mm-hmm. and a teacher. So you know we learn about energy in that and being a conduit for energies and mm-hmm. raising energies and stuff and what lowers your energy and st- and and you know stuff like that will lower your energy yeah and you and you really do feel it you know and that's why after you have like a a reiki treatment you feel like a million bucks because your energy has been raised yeah and when i when i treat people i play um music of a certain frequency that's um depending on the person's need like uh angelic frequency uh or a healing frequency um and uh it makes a difference Mm -hmm. as well and uh and it's just incredible, like what it can do, you know, in terms of like even treating depression and mm-hmm. getting rid of attachments and, um, and yeah. And when, when your energy is, when you get that positive energy, like a post exorcism, I will treat someone, I'll do a Reiki treatment on them to replace that negative energy that's been removed and put mm-hmm. positive energy, that high vibration energy in where the negative has been. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it makes quite a difference, you know, and, or even people in the house because they've been living with such low vibrational energies sure. that, you know, you replace it with that high stuff and, and it just, it makes such a difference. Um, so even watching a comedy and laughing versus watching something that's mm-hmm. like, you know, morbid and, and it just, it just changes how you feel. completely. I, you know, a, it, it, it does. I mean, it, it really, I, I, this last week I've switched out Dateline for Shit's Creek <laughs> And yeah. I, I, and I've been like, <laughs> I feel so good this week. And like, it's, right? I, and it's interesting. It, it is interesting how that stuff affects you. That wraps up part one of our conversation with Sister Kia Lynn Francis in part two. What caused Kia Lynn's house to become infested with demonic entities? What did Kia do when her home was rattled by a dark force quite physically, literally, from scratches on the wall, beds shaking and terrifying noises that could not be explained? How did Kia calm the dark spirit down that was tormenting her home? And why does she think that she seems to be a magnet for spirits to follow her, both good and bad? All that in part two of our conversation. To hear it, become a gravekeeper that's a supporter of our program. Do that at patreon.com slash thegravetalks. Or go to our website, thegravetalks.com, and click become a gravekeeper. $5 a month gets you access to all of our part twos, as well as all of our interviews in their entirety. Uh, Hundreds of them to binge away on right this moment. It also helps keep our show on the air. All the uh, episodes commercial free, and you get advanced episodes as well before the release to the public. If you like the show, please check it out. Patreon.com slash The Grave Talks. Until next time for The Grave Talks, I'm Tony Bruschi. Thanks for listening.